Okay, welcome everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us for today's Tech Talk. Uh, today's Tech Talk is going to introduce mobile map tools. I'd like to introduce Diego Gomez Deck. Uh, he's the co-founder and CTO at Glob3 Mobile. Uh, Diego, when you're ready, uh, please take it away. Okay, thank you, Andrew, uh, and thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to to show our technology with you. Um, I'm going to, to show and to introduce you uh, mobile map tools. That's the new name of the framework we, we were working on the last couple of years. Uh, the former name is Glob3 Mobile, so you still will, have, will find some references using the, the old name, but we are changing it to mobile map tool. Um, Please feel free to shoot any question uh, in any time. Don't don't wait for the final slide to to shoot the question. I will be really happy to answer the question uh, in in the middle of the presentation. So let's go ahead. Glob3 Mobile, the former name, uh, Mobile Map Tools. It's an API designed and development to build native mapping applications that work on any device. Uh, we, when we started to develop Glob3 uh, Mobile, we, we was in front of uh, a lot of challenge. The, the most important challenge, the most difficult uh, challenge what to 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 reach was uh, the big fragmentation and the, 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 there are a lot of mobile uh, devices and we have different software different hardware uh, we want to cover from small a uh, phone with this very small displays to large tablets or even large uh, displays on desktop too. So the other point is uh, the platform, the, the tablet and the mobile platform is new, uh, user interface paradigm. So uh, the multi-touch, um, it's the multi-touch uh, user interface design is quite different. That's uh, that's the previous interfaces we we use before. Uh, so it's just that word to just ports any desktop application to mobile. The user interface is difficult. It's different, sorry. So as I tell you before, fragmentation was the most hard problem to solve. We have software fragmentation, that means different frameworks uh, to develop on iOS, for instance or Android, for instance, different languages, uh, Object C or Java, uh, etc. And we also have a big fragmentation on the hardware side. So we, we have uh, from these cheap Android devices with small screens to, in the other end, uh, big tablets with uh, high performance GPUs, etc. So different sensors, uh, different uh, responses in, in the in the touch screen, etc. So the key here is to be multi-platform. We we need to cover the whole mobile environment, iOS, Android, Windows 8. Etc., and we also wanted to to reach the desktop uh, uh, computers. So we decided from the very beginning to create a, a core that could be easily translated and easily used natively on all the platform we support. And we we got uh, this. Uh, this uh, design 
and in fact it worked so very well and now we are uh, planning to to move our platform to desktop to desktop computers too like a C++ native application etc so we we have for today three platforms and we are going we are going to to cover more platform in the near future so this is actually the an architecture overview. We have the core system written in C++, which uh, this core written in C++ will reach to iOS uh, using some glucose, some binding code, and using an automatic translation, we convert the C++ sources to Java, and using these sources, we reach Android uh, using Java native uh, APA, and we also reach uh, HTML file, WebGL using GWT. GWT is a Google product that translates Java to JavaScript. It's a Java to JavaScript compiler. Um, the other important point is our core is really multi-platform from the very beginning, so it's quite easy to expand the platform. So, for instance, Windows 8, we will we will we will get a new port for Windows 8 in the short term or medium term, uh, and we can move our core to a different set of uh, to a different set of uh, native platforms. So to resume here, currently we have three of them: iOS, Android, and HTML5, and we are planning to move the the, the product to new platforms. This is another point I want to to, to speak about that is uh, usability. You know, a, a platform, a, an application that use a multi-touch user interface without a keyword, it's uh, different than a desktop uh, application with, with the mouse. For example, uh, with the mouse, you have pixel accurate clicks, and with the finger, you have not such precision. So the whole interface has to be thinking in a different way. Okay. In the current version, we reached the goal to be multi-platform with uh, the three uh, uh, platform we already support, iOS, Android, and WebGL. And this is a set of the main features we really, we already have uh, programmed in the, in the core. We have 2D, 2.5D, and 3D uh, visualization of maps. Uh, we can show any kind of data, GIS data or other type of data, raster information, uh, uh, terrain elevation models, vectorial data, points cloud, 3D models, 3D shapes, etc. And we also have a good symbology library that allows us to uh, create symbolization using labeling, markers, uh, and we are now in the process to support Carto CCS uh, languages for symbology. Also, to reach the mobile platforms, you have to be, you have to have in mind from the very beginning that the mobile devices are not always connected. So you have a broad range of possibilities from one application that is 100% online, that is consuming real time data connected uh, in, in every moment, or you can have a mixed scenario where half of the data is offline, it's, it's on the 
uh, some information is on the device itself, and in the other end, you, you can create a complete offline application that doesn't need internet to work from the uh, from one end to the other, to 100% online to 100% offline. Let me see the questions. Okay, the first question is, what data format does Mobile Map Tool support? Actually, this is an, an easy question. We just support GeoJSON for Vectorial and uh, uh, any type of bitmap for raster. Uh, any type of bitmap, I mean PNG, JPEG, etc. So the decision here was we know that uh, to create a mobile solution, you have to, uh, to, to, to create a good mobile experience, you have to, to program two sites, one in the mobile side, mobile side, and the other on the server side. So we decided that any kind of data transformation has to be uh, made on the server side in real time or, 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 or in a batch process or, or things like that. So the decision for data format was on the server side, we support most of the data formats because we, we convert them to GeoJSON. And we just have one GeoJSON parser, really simple parser on the mobile side. And we decided not to support quite a lot of formats on the mobile side itself to avoid a complex code base. The second question is, can I change the style of the user interface if I want to? Um, actually, we have two user interfaces. One is the globe itself, the 3D view of the map. That is 100% configurable. You can change the background color. You can change uh, the look of the maps, etc. But we don't provide uh, native widget support in, 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 in the core. So for a user interface that will use some native widgets, uh, they have to be made using the native, uh, native uh, widget in each platform. We don't support, we don't provide, for instance, a button or a combo box or something like that. We just provide a widget that shows the 3D map of the, of the, which has created a 3D view of, of a map. This is our widget. And this widget can be fully configured. So let's continue with the rest of the, of the feature we have. We have a couple of subsystems. Uh, we have, for instance, Tax Manager. A tax Manager is a, a piece that allows you to run periodical tasks, for instance, if you need to to update data in intervals, in regular intervals, we provide a mechanism, an easy mechanism for this. Uh, the other subsystem we have is a cache system that works together with the offline capability of the uh, of the Globe Three Mobile. Uh, any information you download from internet is automatically cached on the system to reduce uh, bandwidth uses and improve uh, speed up and the speed of the final application. We also have a, a, an animation system that allows us to create a complex animation for the camera or for any object on the system. We will see them, most of them of the demo. And we also support real-time uh, management from uh, in the online part of the use cases, we have uh, support for WebSockets or, or, or this type of technology to have real-time uh, interaction in the, in, the, in the globe. So from 100% online to 100% offline and all the gray shape. Okay, I will switch to, to the demo where I'm going to show you uh, 
most of the features. I'm running it on a simulator on my uh, desktop device, so I can share with you the, the screen. And let me tell you that the video codification introduced some gaps in the animation. The, in the video, the animation is not so smooth like it is in the real life. So the, 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 these hangs in the animations are caused by the video encoding, not by the application itself. So raster layers, we support a lot of different data sets. Some open data or closed data too. Different type of example of raster information. Satellite images. We also support to mix different layers. In this map, actually, we have two different set of, of raster data that is mixes on their client side. We support WMS servers or Bing maps, etc. This is the raster functionality. Another <clears throat> example is this uh, elevation model. And in this case, we decided to, to show just a subset of the whole world. You don't need to, to, to show the whole world. If your application is just a local data, you, you can just show a small set of a small part of the whole world. Here you see the terrain. So we support a digital terrain elevation model. We also support rasterization of vectoral data on the fly. In this example, in this example, you can see rasterization of lines, rasterization of polygons, and also markers with interaction. We too have support for to show a lot of markers. We have to support for 3D symbology. In this case, we are using 3D shapes to show information that come from a points, uh, a points layer. We are using 3D shapes and labeling for showing, in these examples, population of the series. We have support for showing 3D uh, points clouds. <clears throat> we have support for complex camera and 3D object animations. In this example, the plane is moving as well as the camera is moving in the in the same animation.
another example of uh, complex camera animations. This is another example of a 3D model with a complex camera animation. Okay, that is the, the demo. So, if you have any question, please uh, show it, or you can get much more information as well as videos and also running examples on our main page, glove3mobile.com, or in our GitHub repository. And okay, there are a couple of questions. Can you handle time series data? Yeah, actually we can handle it. We have uh, some examples published. You, you can find it on the on the GitHub page where uh, 3D shapes are animated based on time uh, based data. Um, about the license. We are using a uh, BSD license, uh, a very library license that allows uh, make any modification of the code and allows a proprietary use of the code. In fact, it allows you to release license if you want. Great, thank you very much, Diego. Um, I've uh put all the questions that I could find uh, that people posted in various um, forums to Diego. If you have any additional questions, feel free to comment on the video. This will be posted in YouTube uh, as well. Uh, you can you can also uh, contact um, uh, Diego and the team. Uh, I guess you have a, a community mailing list, uh, Diego. Certainly when your uh, project is up and running, you'll, you'll obviously have that. Or mm -hmm. some, of the, some of the other ways people can, can contact the team. Yeah. Well, they can contact on the, our GitHub pages uh, for today. Um, I also put in here my uh, email address or my Twitter uh, account. So contact, uh, ask for any question or any commentary you have. And thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you. Great. Thanks again, Diego. And uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, watching today's uh, Tech Talk. Take care okay. and uh, bye now. Thanks.